Here are four coding projects that you need to do if you want to break into big tech as a six-figure software engineer. And I'm going to be talking entirely from my experience as a person who's been through it from the beginning, just learning how to code, learning the basics to an intermediate level as a computer science degree, college student, grasping technical concepts, all the way to advanced level projects and some pretty niche projects that will actually help you land roles in big tech. One of my first big projects that I did was this card matching game in Java FX. Java JavaFX is this like UI framework slash library within Java, which will help display your code in a graphical user interface. And the game that I created was this card matching game. So you know those games in which you have 52 cards, they're all face down. A person selects one card and then selects another card at random. If the cards match, they get a point. If not, it's the other person's turn. Well, that's pretty much what I implemented in Java. I implemented it both in the graphical as well as the command line. And it was a really cool project because I learned a lot of basic object oriented principles as well as data structures and algorithms, which are super important in computer science. Projects like these, such as games or a to-do list in Python, calculator in Java, in JavaScript, these basic projects are your best bet. Project-based learning sticks like nothing else can. And also pull up those YouTube tutorials and code alongside them. It's almost as if you have like a mentor right there who's just teaching you how to code. They are the best. But also if you're super, super brand new to coding, like you don't even know how to write your first line of code, I encourage you to check out Cody.t Tech. Cody.tech is this great platform in which they give you bite-sized lessons to learn pretty much any programming language out there. I encourage you to start off with Python. Check out their Python module. It'll not only teach you a lesson within Python, but it'll also give you an assignment to code something out. And if you're confused about anything or you have any questions, they have an AI bot to answer any of those queries. It's entirely free, but if you're interested in their premium features such as unlimited AI requests, you could use this code right here for a 20% off discount. But whether or not you decide to use Cody.tech, project-based learning is the best way to learn. And not only that, but it helps you build experiences because before you have internship, extracurriculars, literally any sort of experience, projects will help boost you like nothing else. So moving on from the beginner stage, sort of going to the next level, level two, and this is the beginner slash intermediate stage. So you understand how to code, but you don't really have that great of projects to potentially impress recruiters. So where do you step up from there? My first recommendation in this category is a personal portfolio website, and this is for two good reasons. So the first thing is you're probably going to be messing around with some JavaScript, specifically React.js, which is a popular framework, and JavaScript itself is the most popular programming language. On top of that, the second reason is that this project will be served as the basis for any future projects for you. You can throw in any experience that you have on it, any projects you've done on it. So any recruiter who's on your LinkedIn clicks on your website or on your resume, you put your website on there. That's like a resource, an artifact that they can view and be like, oh, this guy, he claims he knows React.js, but he actually knows React.js because he's implemented this nice, neat personal portfolio website. If you're just trying to get started and learning JavaScript overall, I recommend that you guys check out CodePen.io. It's this pretty nice, neat coding sandbox in which you can put your HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And as you're typing out the code, it literally renders right in front of you. And so you don't really have to worry about any configuration issues, testing, setting up issues. I know those are probably the most annoying things that I faced anytime I worked on JavaScript, but using CodePen has literally like made it super easy. Definitely recommend that. Also other like frameworks within JavaScript. So we got React, Angular, and Vue. Those are really, really popular. JavaScript, I believe is used by like 65% of companies. So it's very, very valuable to like throw on your resume. And once again, you can use Cody.tech if you're interested in learning JavaScript. After that, moving on to the next category, intermediate slash advanced. You're not necessarily a coding wizard just yet, but you do have enough experiences and you can start really gunning for top tier tech internships. And this is where I recommend that you guys do a machine learning prediction project. Personally, when I was in college, I did this COVID-19 death predictor in which we developed these neural network algorithms that could predict COVID-19 death based off of this data set displaying all of these countries' metrics. We got this large data set from Kaggle. It contained population metrics for United States, Mexico, Canada, all these different countries, population over 65, population density, any category or factor that could link up to a COVID-19 death. We took all these like different columns and we set the prediction as the COVID-19 deaths. But how does this apply to you? One, it's actually not as complicated as you think. 
thing. All you need is a data set and I recommend you get it from Kaggle. Then you throw it into this data processor, whether you use Pandas or any online generating thing that can like smoothen out the data. And then you throw it into the scikit-learn library, which is straightforward. It's very simple to understand machine learning in that all you have to do is basically train it and then test it and then get the reporting metrics from it. There are a plethora of tutorials, a plethora of documentations to understand scikit-learn. I was able to pick it up without much background at that point. And the second reason that it's so, so good is because it makes excellent talking points for interviews. I was recruiting for internships during the season and every single technical interview I had when they asked me about some experiences I had, I brought up this thing. We were once again in the heights of the pandemic, so it made for a very relevant topic, but also very impactful. A COVID-19 death predictor, imagine if this was deployed and put out to scale. Countries could understand risk factors essentially of what certain metrics were determining their COVID-19 deaths and they could actually properly plan. Maybe they were going to distribute vaccines a little more urgently in certain countries. So find something that's impactful and meaningful. And the most important part of all of this is get accuracy reporting metrics. You want accuracy, precision, and recall metrics because these are things that you could point out, be like, oh yeah, my model had an 85.7% accuracy. That's impressive. That's something you can talk about in interviews and also put on your resume. On your resume, you want to make sure to put your numbers because that's what actually will quantify your experience and quantify the impact that you're making. You do this amazing project, but who cares? They'll care if they see that accuracy. Like anyone can develop a machine learning project, but who can actually hyper tune it and create a good model? Clearly only you, or I mean, whoever actually develops this project. Another project that I did that was kind of cool in this realm. So as part of my Amazon software engineering internship, I developed this chime bot, pretty much kind of like Slack in which when you type someone's name, it gives like a suggestions. Like for example, if I at S-A-J-J, -J, it might actually show my full name Sajad and like you have a contact list. Well, at that time, we were using Amazon Chime, which is pretty much Amazon's version of Slack, but I think they actually use Slack now. It wasn't developed yet. And we actually developed these alias systems in which we used a bunch of different AWS technologies, such as like Lambda, S3, different things like that. And we were able to effectively develop it. I'll be honest, I was paired on a team with a lot of senior engineers, so I didn't actually do a lot of hands-on coding, but it was a good first exposure experience. And maybe you guys can look into like these hackathons for like a little bit of an exposure experience. You actually don't even need to set up teams before hackathons because if you show up without a team, they'll throw you on a team. And hopefully if they have a little more experience than you do, you'll definitely learn a lot, whether you contribute or not. The fourth and final project that I want to talk about is called Tweet Sweet. So this is a project that I did during my master's in which it was part of this course called Data Visualization and Analytics. And pretty much what it does is given a person's Twitter handle, it'll actually analyze all their tweets and understand how toxic sick this person is and display it on a dashboard. And the principle is before you follow someone on Twitter, you get to have an understanding of how toxic they are. The reason that this project was so good was because it incorporated a lot of elements of machine learning, but a lot of elements of visualization and impact. Once again, the best projects are the ones that involved a lot of technology, but have a purpose, but have an impact. The way that this was developed was we had a big trading data set, I believe from Kaggle once again, in which we had a bunch of different people's Twitter handles, as well as certain tweets that they put out. And pretty much we trained this machine learning model off of the Google's API, which actually gives a toxic score depending on the certain sentence that is fed into it. And so we were able to develop this neural network model and then feed it through this AWS deployer that displayed a D3 dashboard, a D3JS. That's like a data visualization library framework within JavaScript. So you could sort of drop down, select different people's Twitter's handles and interact with the dashboard and see see the person's toxic trends over the time, certain words that they're using. Very cool project because we actually deployed it. Recruiters or any interviewers who we were talking to could actually use it and see it in real time. And also we did a lot of user studies, a lot of user metrics so people can actually give us feedback and actually properly evaluate our project. And our TAs loved this project. They were like, this is the coolest project I've ever seen. And this is a master's course. So it was really, really awesome. But the point I want to actually hone in. So I already talked about machine learning in the last point. I want to talk about 
dashboarding and AWS. Dashboarding, obviously very good for like visualization purposes so people can see the work that you've done. But also AWS is extremely, extremely hot, especially in a time right now in which the economy isn't the best, big tech isn't hiring as much. Any strategic advantage that you can place for yourself can only help you. And specifically an AWS certification, a lot of companies are actually moving on from an on-prem environment to a cloud-based environment. And so they're looking for people who understand the cloud, whether that like be the technology such as S3, Lambda, different things like that. Or you want to actually do a formal certification. I'd say just stick with like the basic developer associate certification. You should use AWS Educate if you're trying to learn anything like that. I'd say that's a really good bet for you. That'll position you really well to not only do some more of these projects, but also potentially get hired and not only hired, but also increase your starting salary because you'd be valued as a hot commodity on the market. Well, that's about all I have in this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Comment down below which project that you guys are interested in. Also, what future videos that you guys want to see from me. And if you did like this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're interested in a complete beginner's guide to breaking into tech, you might want to watch this video right here.